Today, we're looking at one of my favorite topics. You know what? It's probably my favorite topic. It's time to attempt to explain line choice. Oh, and this is a two for one deal here. I'm also gonna tackle vision, and that means where you're looking, and more crucially, when you should be looking there. Once you've unlocked the secrets of line choice and vision, you'll find yourself flowing trails, nailing tricky sections, and setting personal best down all your favorite tracks. Sounds dreamy, right? Let's begin. Okay. Taking the direct line over the roots, or are we gonna go below them? We're going straight, boys! Whoa! Oh, he's coped it. We'll tackle line choice first, as you should really figure out where you're going before thinking about where you should be looking and when. Wrong. You actually need to look first to decide what line you're gonna take. You're welcome. What douchebag? Line choice is one of those skills you don't really realize you need until you end up in the wrong place, at the wrong time, at the wrong speed, in the wrong body position, and if you're lucky, you won't stack it. Your luck will run out though, so you gotta be careful. It can be easy to recognize when someone does a good line as usually it looks so fluid, easy, and fast. Sometimes creative line choices will take you by surprise and leave you wondering, why didn't I think of that? and other times riders will take lines and you'll think, well, there's no way I'm even attempting that one. Well, go watch all the other how to bike vids, practice for give or take seven years, and then you'll nail it, no stress. I like to separate line choice into three generalized types. There's the good old safe line choice, which involves picking your way through sections, staying clear of danger, keeping you healthy, and guaranteeing that you make it to work on Monday morning. There's the fast line, which gets you from A to B as fast as possible so you can chip away at your personal best times because you'll be damned if Joe Barnes is going to be quicker than you on your own track. Joe, pies and rice. Christ. <laughs> Finally, there's the fun line choice where you play about, carving turns, popping off everything in sight because bikes are fun and swerving about and doing stunts is freaking sick. But I'm mainly going to focus on the fast options today. Now, condensing this mystical and vast subject down into some simple rules could be very controversial, but I'm gonna give it a go. Obviously though, every trail and section is different and every rider is different, so there is no one line that will suit every rider. So you'll have to apply these rules through your own personal lens. For safe lines, there is one main rule. Miss every obstacle, root, rock, hole that you feel is out of your comfort zone in as fluid a way as possible. This sounds lame and boring and obvious, like it might be defeating the purpose of mountain biking, but it is the key to safe and consistent riding. Also, a beginner's version of safe is completely different to an intermediate's version of safe, which is completely different to an advanced version of safe. Safe can still be sick and you don't need to be taking risky lines to ride really well. There are many rules within the main safe line rule, but luckily they are all included in the fast line section, so we'll focus on that now. Here are my four rules for fast line choice. Be direct, arc your turns, aim for grip, make it easy. Rule one is an obvious one. The shortest route from A to B in theory should be the fastest. But mountain bike tracks aren't uniform. There's rocks, roots, soft bits, off cambers, and all other manner of things that can make the most direct and straight line sketchy as hell, or the least direct line to be the most supportive and fast. All of these rules need to be balanced out with each other to truly find the best line, but being direct is the first one I'd think about. Oh, and while we're here, unless you built the track, do not apply this rule to go off track and cut corners. If it's an accident, that's fair enough, but if you're intentionally missing out turns to try and get king of the mountain, I will have no qualms about calling you a Hey! Oh! Can't do that! Oh, and for racing, it's a whole different kettle of fish. Downhill races that are taped from the top to the bottom actively encourage you to get creative and get off the worn-in trail to try and find the quickest way to the bottom. Enduro races that aren't taped top to bottom used to be a free-for-all, but most organizers now enforce a stick-to-the-trail rule. 
This is open to interpretation a little bit, but generally speaking, setting up a little wide, slightly off track for a turn is okay, but cutting a turn is a big no-no. This may be different in your region though, so if you're unsure, just stick to the warning line. Where was I? Right, okay, yeah. Rule two, arc your turns. This phrase is a simple way of saying, make your turning angle as open and smooth as you can. This is based on the simple theory that the tighter a turn is, the slower you will have to go. You can open a turn angle by setting up wide on the entrance or running wide and using all the available trail on the exit. Arcing the turn isn't always the best way though and sometimes a tighter line has more support and grip, which leads on to the next rule. Rule three, aim for grip. This mostly applies to braking and cornering where you need maximum traction to slow down late and quick and then turn fast. Grip comes in two forms, either lack of obstacles like roots that will easily cause you to lose traction or the presence of supportive structures like ruts, banks and berms that will hold your tires when cornering. Performing your braking and cornering at these points of maximum grip will make you faster and more consistent but it has to be balanced with rule one and two. No point hitting that grippy braking zone if it's miles away from the direct line. Now you want the braking zone up here. <laughs> rule four, make it easy. This is a general rule you wanna apply over the top of all the others. And it's interesting as quite often you'll see riders trying to do the hardest lines, assuming that they must be the best ones because you know the pros always take the gnarly lines. While difficult lines can be quicker, most riders will be faster and more consistent on lines they feel more confident on. This means that yes, apply those first three rules, but then do what you can to simplify the line so that you can come in more confident and fast instead of defensive and slow. This could be as simple as squashing a gap into a gnarly bit or taking a slight detour from the direct line to miss a slippy route. So those are the rules for each. I'm going to show you how to apply these on some spicy sections in a second, but first we need to cover vision as it's the key thing that makes all of the above work fluidly. So everybody's heard the classic tip, you know, head up, look ahead. Yeah, look up, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. yeah, really good rule, works really well. I'd recommend that, but it needs a bit more context. I see so many people trying to apply this and they're staring miles off down the trail or looking to the exit of turns before they've even entered the start of the turn. This makes them tense and nervous as hell because they have no idea what their tires are going over. Most people know that staring at your front wheel is not ideal because as you're precisely negotiating your way around this stone, that route, this stone, you have no idea you are heading straight for a tree or a drop or some other disaster. But I'm also suggesting that looking way off into the distance is wrong too. Let's simplify things. Here's my general rules for vision. Rule one, the faster you go, the further ahead you look. Rule two, focus on the next line. Rule three, focus on the next line before your front wheel hits the previous one. And rule four, filter out the noise. Logically, rule one is obvious as when you're going fast, things are coming at you quicker and you need to give your brain time to process what's coming. That means if you're dribbling along at walking pace and there's a really tricky bit that you need to negotiate, it's fine to be staring right in front of your front wheel. Just don't leave your eyes there once you go fast again. Rule two is almost not worth mentioning as everyone looks at the next line they're gonna hit. Unless you live in the fifth dimension and time is irrelevant and you don't need to look at your line because you've already hit it. <sighs> everyone is focusing on the next line and rule two is just a setup for the big one. Rule three, if you remember anything from this video, make it this one. Focus on the next line before your wheel hits the previous one. This is the secret to flow. You know how all those C-grade YouTubers clickbait you in with, this secret to riding fast, or this one skill will transform your riding, or mountain bike coaches hate this one simple trick. Well, stop your search, this is it. Most riders, when hitting lines, focus on them, that's rule two, and as they come up to them, they'll stay focused on the line all the way up to it, and they've nailed it. Then they look up. It's already too late. The next line is over there and they're heading that way and the anchors are deployed, but it's too late and they're off track and everyone's laughing at you. Oh, was that the line? Was it? Was that the line? Was it? Was it? Was it? Was it? Was it? 
I've made that mistake many times and it's super hard not to do it, especially when you're riding trails that you don't know. What happens if you don't know the trail or the lines for that matter? Well, I try and do all of the aforementioned things, but every time there's nothing to immediately deal with, I do a quick scan. I flick my eyes up, look down the trail to see what's coming, where the trail's heading, and if there are any decisions to be made. If there's a gnarly bit coming up, don't just lock eyes with that first feature. See where the trail is heading so you don't get pushed off into some danger zone or God forbid, a slow line. <gasps> Finally, rule four for vision, filter out the noise. This is another one of those rules that's hard to put into practice and it's more something that comes naturally with experience, but it's good to be aware of. I'm sure a lot of you will have ridden some sections and felt like you're looking at every rock and every feature and rock, root and oh my God, my brain just can't keep up. This is especially true when you are new to riding and every little thing looks like a hazard that your brain just needs to evaluate and just dedicate all its power to. Faster riders don't have super fast brains that are able to just process this stuff at superhuman speeds. At least I don't think they do. I know I definitely don't. What I do know is I only look at the things that are important. This means don't stress about the smaller bumps and little rocks that your bike can easily deal with. Just look ahead at the shape of the trail and spot the smooth and grippy points to place those tires. And a professional rider doesn't see everything that's going on. They'll write a section and like a beginner will be like, oh man, did you see those roots? And oh, did you see that rock? And they'll be like, nope, didn't see it. I was just following the shape of the track. My bike just dealt with it. So that will come with time and looking ahead and spotting the safe places to put your tires will help with that. And it just, it's practice, time on the bike and practice. The better your skills become, the more stuff you can just filter out and the easier the trail then becomes. So this is a famous section at the Dunkeld downhill track here in Scotland because it's chunky, messy, rocky, slippy. It's so wide, you can go here, you can go there. It's a scary section. So perfect to have a look at for line choice. So what I like to do is try and like, don't focus on any of the little intricacies. Look at the general shape of the track and where you want to get to. And that is the way that you figure out the first rule, which is being more direct. The right line, you can see it goes right round the outside of this turn. It's a longer way around, so the most direct line should be on the left line. So that'd be the first one I'd have a look at. So I'm gonna have a look down this and just see what's going on there, because if there was something really gnarly and chunky or awkward on it that stalled you, then this direct line would actually end up being not as good. We also wanna make it easy. So coming down here, there's like rocks like here that you can see the brown line, people are funneled in between them. But if you stand back, you can see, you can actually make things more direct by not getting funneled into the, the channel. You can actually just take a straighter line. And I know I wanna be ending up at the turn by this huge tree. There's a little bit of support there and that's the only turn on this section. And I wanna corner where there's support. And it's just down there by the tree beside the rock. So we're being direct down here. We're making it easy. We're trying to straighten things up. We're trying to miss all the nastiest rocks. You don't want to be cornering in all this mossy rockage. You want to be cornering here. There's a nice channel that's going to hold you. You're not going to wash out. So we've been aiming for grip. We're being direct. And now we've got the exit. And this is actually where most people have issues. This is the most common bit people get things wrong because they end up just seeing this mess of rocks and then it's slightly off camber and people get pushed down low. So this is where I'm really going to be focusing on my vision because I find straying offline is uh, a vision issue most of the time because you just look at the hazards and go mm, and then end up going the wrong way. So I know to get up there towards the exit, I need to be going between these two stones here. And this is where I should probably reference line choice isn't a, like a, you don't just look for the left line or look for the right line. Each line will have little marks that you want to try and aim for and it's usually where it's most challenging is trying to spot the place you definitely want to put your tires so I know here I want to put my tires between those two stones I'm going to look for that mark and this is where we get to that vision thing where I know I want to get between those two rocks but I don't keep staring at them until I get to it as soon as I feel like I'm going to get between those two stones and then I'm going to look up for the next thing I want to aim for and the next marker I aim for 
is going over the round rock on the exit because there's another corner coming up and I want to arc my turn for that corner. I don't want to be coming in on the right side of the track, which makes that corner tighter. I want to be coming in wide so I get a nice arc into that corner. So we've been nice and direct. We've come into this shortest line possible. We've aimed for grip. Then I'm trying to make things easy. So I'm taking a slightly straighter setup before you get to that turn. I'm also trying to put the tires where I know they're not going to slip. And I'm doing that by picking marks to aim for on the line that I want to do. And each time I'm about to hit one of the marks I've picked, I'm then looking up to the next one. So I'm always ready for what's next and holding that line. I didn't want to make things too complicated. I mean, I already have, but line choice isn't just where you go left and right. It's actually where you put pressure in your wheels up and down as well. So here, there's a little chunky bit where there's not that much grip. Stones are a little bit slippy. You can actually jump them. So where you jump from and then until is also line choice. You can, you can go light as well. You don't have to fully jump, but pretty much if there's anywhere that you're worried your tires washing out or slipping on when it comes to going in a straight line, try and pick places where you can unweight the bike. Uh, I'm taking the most straight line, I'm aiming for grip. And also when there's not grip, I'm unweighting my tires. Little bonus rule. This is the hardest corner on the Dunkel downhill track. It's a bit overgrown because it's so hard, no one rides it. For sections where there's something really obviously hard, you want to figure out the line that makes the hard bit easier. Because what that does, the easier you can make that difficult challenging bit, the more speed you can then carry through it. And that's a good thing to try and do. So I'm still going to apply all the other rules, but we've got two line choices down here. So let's go and have a look first. So we'll come into here. There's a big stump in the middle of the track and a very clear line going left of it and a very clear line going right of it. If you go left, it's the more direct line coming in. You don't have to stress too much about the corner here because you can just go straight into it, but it's really rough and you're left with a really tight turn just as you get to the stump. But there's something you can actually do on the wider line to make it easier. So it's really chopped out on the main line coming in and a really tight turn at the end. So how can we make things easier? Remove the big choppy bit from the equation and make the turn wider. You want to arc the turn. So you can actually go wider on the way in, right next to the tree, miss the really rough stuff, and then get a wider turn. There's a bigger drop you've got to deal with, but a bigger drop's easier to deal with than rattling your fillings out and then leaving yourself with a nasty turn. So that, that's a way of making that wider line work a bit better. The inside line, really tight turn on the way in, really narrow, oh, really, really awkward, but a little bit shorter, and you can actually get your brakes off sooner to then carry speed on the way out. I'm trying to be direct, so that inside line is more direct. Then we're trying to corner where there's grip. So this bit here, there is no grip. If you were to come in straight and do all your turn in there, limits how fast you can go, makes it really hard. So what you can do, arc your turn, set up wide on the way in, do a lot of your turning earlier to make that bit easier. Corner in where there's grip, so I'm cornering up here a little bit more. And then in general, trying to make things easier. So I would do all my slowing down up here, make sure that I'm all nice and comfy and allow me to then carry the speed out. So it's that bringing the eyes through to the next mark that you're aiming for all the time. Don't let them linger. It's really easy to let them linger on this really tight, awkward bit. The more awkward and the more gnarly, the more your eyes just want to stick to it. It's target fixation. Things you're worried about, your, your brain's just like, ah, then you hit it. <laughs> you don't want to do that. So 
use line to make it easier so it's not as stressful and then it should be easier to then bring the eyes through. So let's, let's ghost this bit. Hopefully you learned something today. And if you did, you should focus on a line straight down to that like button. That's the racing line. If you've got any questions, I'm gonna be hanging around in the comments for an hour after this goes live to try and answer them all. Now it's up to you. Grab your bicycle, go out, try and find some new lines on your local trails. Get creative, figure out the sections, use vision to your advantage. Clean that horrendous off camber, subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you in the next video, which may or may not, contain the secrets of Conrad. So you better subscribe. We're off now.